we all used to be makers. We had lived on farms. We had to be, be smiths. We had to be able to do our own timber. We had to like make our own food, all sorts of stuff. And then we discovered, you know, commerce and outsourcing and now we have big box stores now we have internet and one-click buying we've become so divorced from that thing that making is a, is almost quaint and curious it does seem that making things and and society and progress are bound up in some fashion we can only create so much stuff in the world before we're covered in stuff what we really need are are products that you know can augment your lifestyle can make can, can improve quality of life. And so makers really provide that. In the past 100, 200 years, we have been a lot of consumerism. We have uh, been the consumer of the mass-produced stuff. Consumer electronics companies does make it harder to get a grasp of the fundamentals of the way technology works. A lot of times, you can't buy exactly what you need. And in the world of consumer electronics, People are trying to make things incredibly simple, like the latest MacBook. No Firewire port, no Ethernet port. If you want to go out on site and do something with a Raspberry Pi, you need those interfaces. So there's a real tension between the tools that people need and the direction that consumer electronics is going in. And one way of addressing that is being able to make your own stuff or combine commercial stuff in meaningful ways to build a coherent system that you can actually do something with. I think society in general is desperate for more makers. I think right now we're turning into a consumer culture that you're going to look at, perhaps we get to the point where half the people out there don't have jobs that are worth doing. You'll need a living wage and you'll be sitting there playing video games and watching movies for the rest of your life. I think that's a pretty sad existence, honestly. You don't have to build your own house to live in it, but it's helpful to know that here's the hardware store and if something breaks, you know, you can go and fix it and you don't just always have to call up some other person to repair your stuff. Otherwise, then you kind of become a slave to all these these repair guys and they can charge you every once you, you have no idea how to how to fix your own thing it's not only that way we need to become makers to create something different not only to make it easier and better fits our needs I think to train ourselves towards the future I think making things taking things apart understanding how things work I think you're only a passenger if everyone does everything for you if you're just sitting on the top of a body of knowledge that you've got no idea what's going on I don't really think you're being the best human you can be in a lot of ways so there's a certain empowerment to knowing that our technology is not just a black box do people understand electronics like normal people on the street no not really that's correct that yeah the society doesn't understand electronics I think they understand interfaces right you plug in your your jack to the to that plug and you, you, it works, right? I don't think they really understand the signals that are going back and forth. Are they digital? Are they analog? I think that's missed by most people. The more critical thing we have with people is when they're scared of technology. In particular, the society that's around us is becoming more and more dependent on other people to tell us those things. And so one concern I have is that we're all becoming so reliant upon the internet, upon our smartphones, upon our computers and so forth. They're so beautiful and so perfect, we're afraid to take them apart and really look on the inside of them. It's almost sort of a religious experience. Like people even describe them in you know sort of miracle religious like you know terms and, and and you have this sort of priesthood of guys who dictate what features you may have or not have in your phone or how you may use your phone or how you may not use your phone and so on and so forth that's not a really healthy dynamic I think for society at large. Part of it's just that understanding that all these magic things that happen around us in, in our society somebody made them a person an engineer like me actually went and designed this and thought about the user it, it's not some magical thing that that they can't understand. I think that people need to know that, like, actually, no, technology was created by people. It's not a thing that should be controlled by a small cabal of people or a priest or something like this. And that if things are not going well and you don't feel like you're in control, you can get control of it. If it teaches you something, you can maintain it. Having a population who are capable of innovating and improvising is really important if you want to have a resilient society that can face the sorts of challenges that we know are coming up. How do we make sure that these things are being used for what they should be used for? Without like people really understanding these issues, you can have people say, oh, let's bring it up for a vote, and then I'll run a big campaign and convince a lot of people to vote for my side, and all of a sudden a decision is made that's democratic and it should be good for everybody. It may not actually be good for everybody. You, since you, you're able to essentially you know, buy your positions and enforce them upon society through like a sham of democracy because people aren't educated to actually make a choice about these things. The world is right now, we are more focused on virtual development. Like we have forms, we have a lot of apps, we have a lot of surface online. Where do the ideas, where are they going to come from? 
if they're not going to come from people who actually have a problem and figure out how to solve it, where did, where did they come from? We, uh, would we believe that the only people who can possibly have good ideas work for large companies? When we look at back to the history, how humankind come from. We use our hands to create things. Making is really important. Making things is fundamental to society. I think it is important to have the skills to be able to make things. Because you learn about the physical world by doing things. You learn about the nature of mechanisms, the nature of nature actually, everything that's around you by actually getting involved with it. I think it's one of the things that's often missing today. You find that people tend to retreat into a virtual world. By making things we know how to integrate technologies to resolve more vertical needs and also to explore as a new boundary for the technology innovations. For me, as a researcher, it's, it's very important because we are always looking forward what what wasn't done before. It's really healthy for people to be able to create something they see. That's a lot of what makers feel. That's why we have maker fairs. People are rewarded by creating something that they had the idea for. I ran a workshop for people in the galleries and libraries and archives and museum sector last year in New Zealand and people were just doing simple things like flashing an LED, just running the blink sketch on Arduino and they loved it and they got such a rush out of that because it's stripping away all the OS and you know the app store and all that stuff and just getting down to the bare metal and I think that's really powerful and empowering for people. The whole idea of creativity is, I think it's, it's bound up very strongly in the whole maker idea. So we have the artists and musicians and craftspeople who, painters who are, are quite creative people, they're driven to create something, but not because it's tied to progress in society. Sometimes it's just, that's what they do. I mean, engineering itself is kind of an art. That sort of creativity is one of those things that if you don't have it, society kind of grinds to a halt. Science for the sake of science, I think, misses an important aspect to humanity. I think we, we do these things because it's an expression of who we are as people. You uh, make bombs, you don't craft bombs. And so if you make things without asking why you make things, you may end up making things that are harmful, not useful, or not what you intend to do. You can regret doing things without thinking a bit about the, the human implications. Recognizing that there's, there's a, you know, an art to it and also frame the things that we're doing in a more human context and I think it helps keep science more guided so it, it serves humanity as opposed to you know, terrorizing humanity. Society has always been successful because of people who do things, not because of people who consume things. I think we need to make. Uh, right from the earliest days we, we, have, we have made tools uh, and pretty much everything, you know, every tool is just an extension of our, of, of our limbs or our senses to allow us to, uh, to see or do or sense. It's innate within us to want to build things. Even when we started Make Magazine, it was primarily because people got into making because they wanted to, or engineering because they wanted to make things. But when they got to their jobs, they weren't making things, they were managing people, projects, and budgets. Making things and having this opportunity to try and fail makes the, the process of creating more rich because you have to explore different possibilities. And most of the people are creating something new or creating something because they wanted to have it or maybe it's for because the world needed. For doing that, you really need to figure it out different technologies, try, fail, and figure it out how to do it again or making it in a, in a better way. I really love that process of exploring. It's an exploration of electronics, of materials, of how to integrate in that, like in my case, to the body. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole world. So that is why we really need making. We need it to hands-on stuff. It's also the same time the technology binary is going down. It's not that hard to get access the tools, access the technology. So that is why we need to create a community for people they can understanding what is the module. What is the strips? What is the sensors? How we can combine them by our inches, by our hobbies? And I think that there are probably two pivoting points for us. One was in 2009 when we had a major recession in the United States where people started losing their job. They were actually looking for alternative things to do. And really questions that were coming out would be, why don't I do something I really like doing? Makers are more equipped to solve those problems, especially in local communities, especially in rural communities. They can be unique challenges in Australia, maybe it's not big of an opportunity for corporations to tackle because it's, the market's too small. But I also think when you do make something, you just inherently learn more. You learn what you don't know to ask, I think. Jobs in manufacturing are going away due to automation. But more importantly, 
Manufacturing without creativity and innovation is, is really empty. I think society does need pe more people who try to make things. It doesn't necessarily need, we need more professional makers or we need more people who making is their everyday job. But I think the process of making informs you what's possible. And so when you do start playing around with this technology, you, your creativity is kind of opened up and so I think you can start getting much better ideas about you know what we could do with technology. Whereas I think when you don't have that connection, you can either start thinking about ideas where that are going to be not too tangible or you kind of don't really understand the tools that are available. Look, I think what you learn by making is self-confidence and resilience. You might break something or you might stuff something up and so you have another go. So I think there's some really important life skills that you learn, that you don't always solve the problem the first time. Sometimes you've just got to keep plugging away, think laterally, experiment, you know, Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. If you fall into a gumption trap and you're just getting nowhere, don't force it. Go and have a cup of tea and let your subconscious work away on the problem and then you come back and actually I know exactly what it is. Click. Yes, it's working. <laughs> in terms of the need for makers, in terms of people who understand technology and who create technology for fun or in their own way. I think we absolutely do need more. I think humans have that, so at least some humans have like that innate desire to want to sort of tinker and learn and so as long as that whatever gene is out there people will continue to want to engage in that kind of activity. I want to live in a world where we're seeing more just-in-time manufacturing. So I order something, it's customized to my needs, it's going to be a higher quality developed product, so the product development is going to be automated by to a large extent. The cost will still be low, but the quality will be higher. It'll be better for me, it'll be better for the environment. But I don't think that just because China is, you know, the manufacturing hub of the world, excludes the rest of the world from having creative input. If you go to like places like Cuba, everyone's a maker still today and they're probably pro level because they have to to survive because they're you know their their economy relies a lot on the DIY DIY stuff you want everybody to be a maker everybody to be an inventor everybody to be resourceful and empowered and not need to reach out to other people for help I think it comes down to this whole idea of diversity you know somebody born in China and somebody born in Australia is going to have two very different perspectives on the world two really valuable perspectives on the world but we need to be you know we need both of us to be working thinking making to kind of, and hopefully collaborating so that we can kind of ha have a better understanding of, of what is possible I think making things is a important because like when you bring people together and you show each other your projects what you end up with is it's like a culture of innovation so what we see here is people with diverse backgrounds diverse ideas collaborating on things and things that the world has never seen before get invented at make affairs all the time we can maybe make products that make the world better as opposed to worse it's not to say that that's you know that's the only way people kind of rise up and build things. There's still a lot of other traditional ways, particularly in poor economies where you have really amazing stellar makers. For whatever reason, we don't put the label on them because they, they, you know, they didn't come from our culture. I think in the electronics world, making things is important because it keeps you grounded to the physical realities of the things that you're creating. You can't do this entirely with a hands-off approach because ultimately, at some level, physical things are going to happen. And if you don't understand those intuitively in terms of your experience, then you're never going to be able to fully achieve the possibilities that you can achieve. There's going to be difficulties where your understanding of the concepts misses the actual physical creation of the things. Hobby electronics is probably more vigorous than it's ever been but it's operating in a different layer, you know, a higher layer of abstraction than it was before. We used to use electronics as a very specialised field, right? It was the, the group of embedded engineers like me in the late 90s to 2000s was numbered in the 10,000s to 100,000s, no more than that, right, in the whole world. And through the maker movement, it's become so much more accessible, right? We literally have kids in school, right, with Microbit, for example, using that technology that used to be $10,000 for a dev board and a very difficult NDA to even get a hold of the technology, right? And that was still in 2005. It was like that. Electronics is an interesting hobby because you can you can build tools that are actually useful. So to do electronics, you need a power supply. To do electronics, you probably need an audio amplifier, a signal injector. There's a whole lot of really handy things that you can make that teach you about electronics at the same time as being practically useful. It's an acceptable hobby to make a library for a sensor. Like it's an ex coding is actually a hobby for people. And that's done huge things for the accessibility of technology. At the same time, right, that's required us to increase the usability of technology. So what we've seen 
is the need to do things like bring scripting languages into embedded systems. Something we never would have dreamed of doing in the past, right? Oh, we're wasting the resources and all these cycles and all this abstraction. But actually, when you have so many more people involved with making things with technology, you do need to make it easier. So it's pushed up the bar at the same time for usability, which has added the complexity of software, yes, but we have the computing power to deal with that. It's made it a lot more friendly for people to use. And I think we'll see that trend continue. We're gonna see more operating systems that the entire industry uses, like Embed that's come from ARMS, interesting kind of open operating system for really small devices that's shared across hundreds and hundreds of chips. I think we'll see more of that kind of thing in the future where there are really operating systems used on these things. And we'll see a lot more scripting. The microbit's kind of showing a little bit where the world may go in the future. We can do it with kids and teachers because should it be this easy? and can, can you do high-level scripting? For kids, they're more than happy to try it out, whereas sometimes for the industry, it takes a lot longer for these new things to come in just because they're not used to it.